Welcome to Sci-Fi Steve Circum 1950 Spaceships. Today's tour is of the rocket from Radar Men of the Moon. The rocket, which never got an official name other than the rocket, shown here at rest is a single stage to interplanetary travel ship. Measuring some 60 feet in length by 10 feet in diameter, this is a single hull ship. The rocket is designed to take off and land on its belly thus requiring a stretch of relatively smooth ground to take off and land on. The ship has no windows and or portholes, no avionic surfaces, i.e. rudder, ailerons, and or flaps. The ship, in or out of the atmosphere, is controlled by jets located in the nose uh, and aft sections. It does have two doors located in the airlock section, a side door which drops down with steps, and an upper hatch. Let's start the tour by lifting the ship and showing the atomic engines. With the engine exposed, let's explode the engine out so that you can see the major component parts. From left to right, you have the refrigeration unit designed to keep the engine cool. Next, you have the compressed gas containers used to replace the fuel as it is removed from the tanks. Next you have the tanks themselves. The tanks themselves hold metal compressed particles. Uh, metal is very dense and gives you a better burn rate. Uh, next to the gray piece there is the high speed pump designed to move uh, the metal particles. The red cylinder of course is the nuclear reactor divided into five component parts. One component for each rocket engine. Last are the rocket engine nozzles. This is all based on NERVA, N-E-R-V-A. Look it up. It is wonderful. We built and tested a nuclear rocket engine back in 1960 to 1963, meeting military standards. 250,000 pounds thrust per rocket engine. The reactor ran at 5,500 degrees. This is real stuff. Leaving the ship in the up position, we're going to start by dropping the bulkheads and the floor. Uh, as you can see, there are three major bulkheads, either the strongest supports for the ship. This divides the ship into four sections. The very aft section will be the engine. The smaller compartment there will be the airlock. The next larger compartment is the uh, bridge, right? And then the forward section there is going to hold the water and the uh, dispersal ray for going through the cosmic blanket. Okay. Next to drop down is the frame itself. This is pretty much a standard T-shaped frame, okay, probably made of titanium. Uh, as it drops down, you notice that the bottom section from roughly the floor all the way around the bottom is heavily reinforced throughout the center there. This is for the belly landings, um, but you can see it's a good structure. You notice there's extra uh, reinforcements around the door, not as clear as extra reinforcements around the upper hatch. Uh, next drop down is the water and the air tanks uh, for the forward nose. They're actually welded in place and become part of the structure uh, for additional reinforcement. You notice the little dispersal ray comes down there. It actually is not part of the frame, but you can see how it fits in there that way. Last to drop down are the atomic engines. We're going to start the ship's tour at the main entrance, and this is into the airlock. Here we're going to pretend that we've just stepped in off the moon. I'm going to show you how to raise the door with the lever on the far wall, pull it up. When the door comes all the way up, throw the two latches to ensure that the door does not go back down. Throw the Ortega valve on the right hand side down. That will fill the room with air. The red light will go out, the green light will come on, and the needle will spin over to the green side. And then we're safe to move about. Uh, turning away from the outside door, we start by looking up and you'll see the uh, hatch. This is where uh, any one of the Commando Cody rocket men would enter the ship from flight. You can also see around the room that there are lockers. The lockers contain spacesuits. Uh, there's a John in one of them, a place to wash your hands. It also contains all kinds of tools, uh, shovels, picks, hose, uh, coffin hoist, things like that that they may have need for wherever it is that they go. Now we continue our tour and we're pointing to the forward part of the ship and you notice the large circular hatch. 
This is the hatch to the bridge. Now, I made this hatch a lot larger than the one in a movie, but I thought of that uh, for utilitarian purposes. Let's step onto the bridge and move our way up to the nose. The bridge is some 22 feet long. It is 10 foot across the diameter of the ship and 7 foot high from the floor to the ceiling. This is the pilot station. The pilot station is where you fly the rocket. Across the top you'll notice two sets of gauges and switches. These control the rocket engines. You start with your pilot jets which does a warm up of the engines. Then you can go to full thrusters. Here you can monitor the total amount of thrust total heat of each engine. Next, in that tube, is the forward-looking television. This allows the pilot to see. Remember, there are no windows, no portholes. He's looking forward. Across the top there, there's a knob, and on the side there's a knob. This focuses, zooms. It allows the pilot to see where he's going. Next, the control panel is divided into two sections. On the left is space flight. This is where you set your gimbals. You point the ship to where you're going. Right. Once they're locked in, the ship will continue to point itself in that direction. On the right are the air gauges, that is for atmospheric flight. It gives you uh, attitude, it gives you uh, general direction, air speed. Uh, the long black knob there going up and down is your uh, total thrust. And to the left of that is the um, actual speed of the rocket, either in the air or on approach to the target. Right. Next are the control sticks attached to the chair. Uh, press them forward, the ship tilts down. Press them back, the ship tilts up. Uh, tilt them to the right, tilt them to the left. The ship yaws. One forward, one back, the ship turns left. One forward, one back, the ship turns right. This is the weapon station. It controls the only weapon on board the ship which is located in the nose. Specifically more, it controls the firing conditions of the weapon. It sets range, distance, and the amount of force to be used. It does not point the weapon. The weapon is pointed like a nose gun on a P-40. Um, move the ship to the direction you want to go and you're pointing the weapon. So basically he calls out changes to the pilot to move the ship left, right, up, down, and then he fires. It fires in a burst mode. That is, there's one large burst, bam! You hit the opponent. It then recharges. They never talked about the recharging, but I never saw the weapon used more than just once. Wait, once, wait. That's it. On the right, normally the co-pilot's position is the science station. Here one of the officers in the ship would man this station and use the sensors, probably located in the nose, uh, to locate uh, the moon men's bases, uh, rare elements, uh, something in space that they wanted to scan for. Um, limitations or attributes of the station were never covered. It didn't tell you what you could look for. It didn't tell you what you couldn't look for. But he would sit there. Once he found what he wanted to find, he would give commands to the pilot about where he wanted to have the ship taken. And then they would follow the signal to the source. Adjacent to the science station is this panel. This panel's sole purpose in life is to control the atomic reactor. Here, each one of the five segments of the atomic reactor can be monitored. The atomic reactor has five segments, one for each engine. Shielding can be removed or added to each one of the segments as the ship is in flight. That's what this does. It monitors, opens, closes shielding. Uh, critical is to make sure radiation levels stay uh, down and the heat for the reactor stays up. This is the eyes of the ship. This is the radar station. Uh, the scopes there are for forward looking and rear looking radar. Uh, it helps them to track objects around them, uh, enemy approach, things like that. But more, more than that, this is also the engineering station. From here, uh, the crew members can monitor the actions of the entire ship. The atomic reactor, fuel supply, air pressure in any of the rooms, things like that. Uh, it tells them about vacuum leaks, structure, all the kind of things that help make you feel safe in space. 
Now adjacent to the engineering section, I only saw this in one or two episodes, uh, it was a bombing control center. Uh, they actually dropped bombs from the ship. Okay, um, someone would take these bombs, they'd place them in that uh, hatch there, they'd close the hatch, they'd look through the scope, they would do some uh, adjustments, and then they'd throw one or two levers and they would drop a bomb right out of the ship. Many times a very small atomic bomb, they would call it. Very good stuff. Now on the pilot side, behind the storage bins, is the ship's radio. This is an old style analog radio. That is, you dial in the stations that you want, right, turn the volume, break down the amount of squelch that you get, things like that. But it does have multiple channels and allows them to do uh, communication with the Earth, um, even from the Moon. On the pilot side here, you can see there's quite a few uh, storage bins available. Uh, both top and bottom, and then there's a desk uh, area on the top. Now largely this contains food uh, for their trips, their missions, whatever they're out on. Uh, there's no hot or cold. Stuff's all served, packet, pre-done, ready to go, open it up. Uh, you want hot coffee? They talked about it. Ain't gonna happen. The ship doesn't have enough power from what I can see. Right? That's a lot of amperage uh, to put on a ship of that era. So I figured, you know, they had a lot of tuna fish sandwiches in space. Also, this would hold, like, any spare parts for uh, anything the bridge might need, which would include the tools necessary to replace them. I want to thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed all of the drawings. And that concludes our tour of the rocket.